What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again today. I'm pretty excited about this mini PC because uh, this is going to be our first look at Intel's 13th gen mobile chips. And with this, we actually have the brand new i7 1360p. These are known as Raptor-like P chips. And with this one, we get 12 cores, 16 threads, and a boost clock up to 5 gigahertz in a super small form factor PC. Now the first one to the market, at least the first one that I've been able to get my hands on, is from ASRock Industrial. This is known as the Nook S Box 1360p D4. Now the D4 is really for the shape we have here. They also offer another one known as the D5 that will house a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit. But the D4 is the smaller of the two. And as you can see, I mean, this is a super small PC. So inside of the box, obviously we're gonna get the D4 mini PC here. We also get a mounting bracket and some mounting hardware, and they include a 90 watt power supply, which should be plenty for this i7 1360p. Now when it comes to I.O. with this mini PC, up front we get two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've also got one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 and USB 4, otherwise known as Thunderbolt 4 because we are working with an Intel platform here. And this does utilize 40 gig protocol so we can get full speed Thunderbolt 4 and it will support an eGPU. We're going to be doing some testing by the end of this video. Checking out the sides, not much going on here, have some ventilation on both. But around back, we've got our DC power input, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We also get 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and two HDMI 2.0 ports. Now, altogether, we could do quad displays on this, utilizing both of these HDMI ports and both USB-C ports up front. And real quick, I did want to mention that we do have a lit power button on the top of the unit. Now, first thing I wanted to do is just uh, pull the bottom off because this does come as a bare bones unit. I will have to add my own storage and RAM and I wanted to take a look at the internals. I was kind of hoping we would have enough room for a 2.5 inch drive, but unfortunately the D4 is designed to only use an M.2 SSD. And for this setup, I'm going to be using 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte Kingston Fury SSD. As a lot of us already know, Intel 13th Gen will support DDR5 or DDR4, and with the D4, they actually went with DDR4, I guess, to keep the price down for the end user. It actually would have been really nice to have DDR5 with this, because uh, we do use this system memory as VRAM, and we're working with an iGPU in this mini PC, like a lot of the other ones on the market. When it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we've got the Raptor Lake P Intel i7 1360p. 12 cores, 16 threads, 4 performance cores up to 5 gigahertz, and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.7. Graphics are going to be handled by an Intel Iris Xe iGPU. This one has 96 execution units and it's clocked at 1500 megahertz. I'm not sure of the difference between the old Xe and this one, it might just be a higher clock, but we've got those 96 execution units, so we've got the higher end version here. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. We can add one PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. It does have Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and for this, I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro. When it comes to overall performance or using this as kind of an everyday desktop PC, very snappy little system. TDP on this is set at 28 watts with a boost up to 65, which definitely seems a bit high for the small PC, but it actually stayed pretty cool. Now we could use a third party app to kind of adjust that to our liking and I'd say around 35 watts just across the board would be really nice for this little system but I'm going to leave it at that stock configuration. Web browsing really quick with that built in Wi-Fi 6 and this new Intel 1360p handles 4K video playback like a dream. I mean 4K 60 HDR here on YouTube. Had a couple drop frames on the initial load in but that's kind of normal for all these chips. And you know, going into this, I had a good feeling that this 1360p was going to work out really well for kind of everyday use. Even the 1260p was a decent chip. That one also had 12 cores and 16 threads. But the main thing here is multi-core performance is up by about 25% on the 1360. Through my testing so far, single core is looking like it's up around 5 to 8%. But when it comes to Geekbench 5, we got a single core of 1,812 and multi-core is over 10,000. So yeah, I mean, we've got a nice little upgrade when it comes to CPU performance, but I wanted to see if they upped the GPU performance on this because we're still working with Intel Iris Xe graphics, and unfortunately, not much has changed here. With 3D Mark Night Raid, we got a total score of 18,735. Firestrike, 5,091. 
And finally, Time Spy with a 1,915. With these synthetic benchmarks, I'm only seeing around 5 to 8% gain, and that really comes down to this being clocked at 1500 megahertz as opposed to the 1350 in the old 1260p. Kind of wish this was using DDR5 RAM, it would have helped out a bit, but you know, we're still going to be testing out some PC games, and first on the list, we've got Street Fighter V 1080p medium settings. Not bad at all, I mean, we're getting a constant 60 throughout, and on the 1260p, I did have to drop some of these down to low, so we had a low medium mix on that older chip. So uh, either driver optimizations with uh, Intel's drivers, or updates to the game has increased performance a bit. Next up, we've got GTA 5 1080p normal, we can get an average of around 71 FPS. Not bad, definitely playable, and you know, with all of these games, I would just go ahead and turn V-Sync on, just lock it right there at 60 as long as we can hit 60. But the two games we've tested so far are a bit older, and they do run pretty well on integrated graphics, so let's take it up a notch to Cyberpunk 2077. Now with this, we did have to go down to low settings, we're at 720p, and we can only get an average of around 47 FPS out of this one. I was definitely hoping for a bit more, and we could always take FSR to ultra performance, but personally, I just don't like the look of the game. I mean, it would help out, we could gain about 8 FPS, but in the end, I don't think it would be worth it. I also wanted to test out Spider-Man Remastered, 720p, low, and it's trying its hardest to keep right there at a steady 60, but we do get those dips under. And again, you know, we had to take it all the way down to low. We could go to very low, but the game kind of looks horrible at 720p, very low. Next up, we've got God of War, and this didn't fare so well. 720p, low, we got an average of 39 FPS. I was actually sure going into this that we'd get more out of it than this. I thought we'd be at at least 51 on average, but even at these low settings with FSR set to performance, we really can't even get over 50 with it. And the final game I wanted to test, at least on these integrated graphics, was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I like running the built-in benchmark. I've set it to basic, so we're at 720p, most of the stuff is at low and we got an average of 59 FPS with a low of 36. And we are using Intel's XESS scaling. You could try FSR, but I don't think we're gonna get much more out of it with this game here. Now obviously, when it comes to the built-in Iris XE graphics in this new 1360p, we're not gonna get great performance with newer AAA games. Older stuff is gonna run pretty decently, but uh, we do have a little more that we can add to this because we've got Thunderbolt 4 up front. I've got a Razer Core X dock here with an RTX 3060 non-TI variant. Just plug that Thunderbolt right into one of the front ports here. It's gonna detect that GPU. And all of the video is actually going to be running out of the GPU itself. We're not going to be using the internal HDMI on the mini PC. And now, instead of running God of War at 720p under 40 FPS, we can jack it up to 1440p high and get an average of 73 FPS out of this game. So yeah, I mean, Thunderbolt 4 is amazing for these mini PCs, but then you kind of got to invest in a Thunderbolt 4 dock and a GPU but you can definitely up that GPU performance by quite a bit. Another thing I like to take a look at with these smaller PCs is total system power consumption. This can matter to a lot of people depending on where you are in the world, and this one does a pretty decent job. Now, with the TDP the way it's set, we can get on up there for a mini PC, but stock out of the box, idle, 9 watts, gaming, up to 54, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 71 watts. We got a 90 watt power supply, we're well under that limit, and like I mentioned, you can use a third party application to kind of limit that TDP to around 35 watts across the board. And when it comes to performance compared to the old 1260p, on single core we're only seeing about a 5% gain. Multi-core, 25%, which is a significant gain, and the iGPU performance is around 8% more than the 1260p. I was really hoping we were going to get better iGPU performance, and you know, just checking out the spec sheet over on Intel's website, it only states that these are Intel Iris Xe graphics, it doesn't say the generation or anything like that, and I was kind of under the impression that we'd have a little boost in performance, 
And of course we did, but it really only comes down to having that higher clock. It's basically the same Intel Iris Xe setup that we saw in the 1260p, clocked at 1500 megahertz instead of 1350. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely wanna do a little more testing and I'm waiting on some new drivers for this iGPU. I mean, there's a chance we could get a better boost in GPU performance, but you know, from what we've got here with DDR4, I'm not sure how much we could get out of it, you know, with just driver optimizations. If you're interested in learning more about these ASRock industrial nook box PCs, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.